Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and uh, I'm on a new project, and it involves the electric hand cycle. A little big shock there. A lot of my YouTube videos do revolve around it, but, uh, you know, I've implied and suggested that uh, pretty soon there may be a, a kind of a, a revolutionary uh, project uh, around this uh, electric hand cycle that I built and developed right here in in that uh, closet over there. But the new development is that uh, I'm planning to uh, do a dual rear wheel drive, two wheel drive at the rear of a trike, a Delta trike. And uh, I don't think anybody's done it yet. And uh, there is uh, another style of trike, a, a tadpole trike, where there's two front wheels and there is a guy who has uh, or is developing uh, the uh, two front driven wheels to be uh, uh, electric hub uh, driven. So, you know, that's a first for the uh, tadpole trike, but I don't think on a delta trike uh, anybody's done it yet. I've never seen it. I'm planning to do it for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, it's not, they're not critical reasons. They're just because I want to do it. You know, uh, I, uh, uh, built this trike, you know, with the hand cycle concept in mind because, you know, I have uh, ambulating issues and uh, this is uh, uh, very helpful. And uh, I roll right out of here, uh, out of my living room and roll down the street uh, and right into the supermarkets, do my shopping, place groceries in there. <laughs> four-wheel drive truck and you know I can get out of it and clamp onto a uh, shopping cart and do my shopping uh, but you know it, it it's more it's more taxing to me more laborious more energy sapping but uh, uh, this saves me a lot of time I don't even have to transfer my groceries as I you know get into the parking lot I just zip all the way home so you know I enjoy this thing and uh, in the winter, you know, I'll take my truck, uh, and I'm out here on the Great Plains of uh, the North American continent, and there's a little snow, not a bunch, and, uh, you know, a couple of times I've taken my truck and, and wished that, oh, maybe I'll, I could have taken this instead with just a little snow, and I, I, I can't get out there with one driven wheel, but uh, these wheels are, are pretty smooth, and so I'm getting some different tires as well to give a little more grip and this winter we'll see if I can do a little snowmobiling with uh, both of those uh, driven in the rear. But until that time there's another point uh, and another project that is a prelude to that that I want to uh, uh, do first and uh, you may uh, remember my earlier uh, video about the uh, planetary gear set how I was uh, uh, upgrading this planetary gear set because I've been using this for about two years that uh, uh, electric hub on that uh, rear rear wheel right there I don't know if you can see it tilt it down just a hair yeah there's the hub motor right in the rear and uh, this came out of there and after two two years uh, it came out of there because I was getting slippage when I you know hit the uh, throttle and maybe go up a, a driveway, it would, I'd start hearing slippage. And uh, so I thought, oh, it must be these composite gears. You know, they're plastic. They probably wore down. And, you know, it's been two years. Maybe it's time for, for me to change those out. And I had another complete uh, uh, clutch mechanism just like this, brand new. And I thought, okay, I'll just pop those off and put them on. And, and I did that video, and I didn't know what to expect. What was I going to find? But whatever I, I found that seemed uh, out of uh, order, you know, I would just swap it out. And uh, what I found was, was that the wheels, or the gears, were in perfect condition. These things hold up quite well. So 
Uh, that wasn't the weak link on these uh, geared hub motors by BMC. I, I think it's pretty well known now, uh, at least to me, that the weak link is the clutch mechanism that resides in this little slot here. Now, you know, you undoubtedly can imagine that that's where a caged bearing goes, and sure enough, it, it did. But uh, in that caging material, which is only plastic, there were breaks in it. And I thought, well, that doesn't look like much, but sure enough, I plucked it out, and uh, within that cage bearing set was also these little triangles, these little roller cam things, and that's what gives the, uh, the clutch action. As soon as it uh, is energized with this uh, spinning small gear in the center, it locks those in, and the, these babies start spinning, and that what is what gives you the uh, wheel uh, uh, power action. And uh, the nifty thing about these uh, BMC uh, hub motors is not just that they're freewheeling. There's no uh, magnetic drag while the motor is not engaged, and, and that's, that's a big plus. I mean, you don't have drag, so if you're foot pedaling, or you can see I've got a hand crank up top, there's no drag. You're just, uh, you know, lugging the bike, it's weight, and you along, and, uh, you know, the bearings and the mechanism and the hub, and that's all. But on other styles of uh, electric hub motors, there, there's another predominant style. It's called the uh, direct drive, and there's none of these gears, and there's no clutch either. You, you know, fight that cogging action, you know, all the while you're not uh, energizing the, uh, the hub motor. And that has some benefits uh, in that they're cheaper to produce. Chrysolite is the primary one. And they, uh, they're, you can buy them cheaper, but they're bigger, they're heavier. And, uh, you know, if you're riding a, a two-wheel bike and, uh, you know, you're not laying on the uh, throttle, uh, energizing the hub, you know, apparently you feel that those magnets they're always you know close together and they're always cogging when they're not energized so you know i didn't want that you know i'm a poor little crippled boy i didn't want to fight that you know when i'm using the hand crank uh honestly i don't use it all that much except when i'm on smooth spots and i do want to get my exercise and so you know i could have designed and built this without any of that and just made a scooter looking trike that looks you know with bicycle components but i didn't want to do that i wanted to have uh, you know the ability to power it myself uh, if need be uh, when i want to and uh, so far it's been great but you know i'm thinking about now having that uh, second rear wheel energized and uh, i've got all the components now it's uh, taken me about a year to get my finances to where you know, I'm comfortable uh, putting it together because, you know, to with the BMC motor and a good uh, uh, lithium battery uh, and a, another controller, you know, it's about 1500 bucks. So I wasn't in a big hurry to splash out uh, that much cash. So I took it pretty slow and easy and, uh, you know, got my head around, you know, how I wanted to do it. But... One thing, uh, you know, I didn't like about the idea of putting a second BMC uh, uh, hub motor is that since these have the clutch mechanism, let me show you. Here's the other hub laced onto the wheel. Since they have that clutch mechanism right in here, it means that the wheel goes in one direction freewheeling. It doesn't go in the other. It locks in the other direction. That is when the uh, uh, motor engages, it, it won't. You can't put this on both sides of a, a trike and, and dictate which side this wire will hang out. And so when I uh, put this uh, hub motor on, on the trike, you know, I put it on the left side because the left side is, is the side that would leave the cable inboard. It wouldn't be hanging out the side to catch on something. Now, you can secure it down, but still, that's just kind of a loop waiting to latch on to something. And, you know, I zip around on this pretty quick. And uh, 
I just didn't want that uh, hanging out the side, so I thought, eh, how, how do I overcome that? Now, one way uh, you overcome that is by making this clutchless. Don't uh, allow it to freewheel. Now, like the Chrysalite's motors, you will have some uh, magnetic cogging. Now, I don't know what that feels like. I don't know how much resistance is there. I'm going to find out because... Uh, when I took uh, out the uh, guts of the clutch, you know, it's just some ball bearings and those little triangle uh, uh, roller uh, cam looking pieces. Uh, you know, I held on to this and thought, maybe I'll uh, weld it. Because on the, uh, a few years ago, I think there was a, a thread in the uh, Endless Sphere website and somebody had the same problem I had. You know, their clutch was slipping. And, uh, you know, they ended up uh, just getting the part and having it changed out. And, you know, that was that, you know, just like I did. But uh, somebody had suggested maybe they could weld it and, and just forego the clutch. And, you know, I made a mental note of that. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Okay. And sure enough, two years later, my clutch goes out. I replaced it, found out it wasn't the uh, gears. But uh, now I got this. And now I'm thinking about uh, putting a second wheel, and now I don't want that wire hanging out. If I, you know, I had the wire on, on the right side of the left wheel, that's fine. But then I've got to put the other hub on the other side, and the wire's going to hang out board. I, I didn't want that, so I thought, I wonder what it would be like to go clutchless, at least on that one hub motor. So in that way, I can flip the wheel around and most controllers uh, have a jumper so that you can uh, reverse the polarity of the motor so the motor will spin in either direction and the uh, BMC motors will allow you to do that unless you've got that clutch there. Now I tried to do that originally on this motor when I first put it on there. I, wa I was wanting the, the driven wheel to be on the right side but you know, I put the jumper so that it would go in that direction, so I could go forward from, from the right uh, side wheel. Now, locked up. It wouldn't do it. So I thought, ah, okay, gotta, gotta move it over to the left. That's the way it is, and blah, blah, blah. Live with it. But now I'm at the juncture, and I've got a little more experience with these uh, babies, and I just happen to have the problem, and I'm just now getting ready to maybe put the second uh, driven wheel on. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and do what I, I don't believe anybody's done yet with these BMC motors, and that is seize the clutch, do away with the clutch, eliminate the clutch. Okay, and here's the clutch mechanism without the uh, planetary gears on, of course, and as you can see, uh, it's uh, loose now, and underneath here, this... Uh, Thin flange is uh, not enough to really bear any strength, but uh, I'll use it to center. I'll tack it in a few places, and uh, you know I'll undoubtedly clamp it here to get a nice, nice flush uh, fit. And I'll just eyeball it how how close in there. And that's what's really one of the big pluses of the uh, BMC motors. They, they have the quick takeoffs because they have this planetary gear set. When that little uh, gear in the middle uh, gets going, the number of teeth on it is uh, uh, five times less than what these uh, outer gears are. And so, you know, it gets quicker takeoffs. And the direct drive motors don't have that. You know, undoubtedly, you know, if you got a two-wheel bike with one of them on uh, uh, one of the wheels, you know, you got to pedal a little bit to get it up and run it, you know, and then you can kind of back off and lay on the juice. But, uh, you know, on, on these BMCs, you don't have to do this. This thing has quick takeoff. Okay, that's how I'm getting it flush and centered up. I'm kind of liking that. The uh, BMC motors have the ability to place a disc brake uh, on the rear section. Now, as long as uh, uh, the uh, unwired uh, side is outboard, that's a good place to put the, uh, uh, the uh, 
caliper and the uh, drum or the uh, disc. So on that side, you know, it's it's quite uh, quite uh, readily acceptable for uh, a disc brake. Now, disc brakes aren't going to improve the braking for me. I, I'm convinced that uh, the existing V brakes that I have on there are really superior to disc brakes because uh, a disc brake will transmit uh, energy through the spokes, whereas the V-brake is right on the outer uh, uh, diameter of the, uh, the rim and the hub and the wheel. So I'm thinking about uh, putting uh, disc brakes on there for, uh, not because they're better brakes, but let me show you. I'll get down here and show you uh, what might be better about having disc brakes on a, a setup like this. There's there's my Christian Anarchist plate. And it's uh, also an anti-statist uh, statement or sentiment, I suppose. But anyway, here we are. And uh, as you can see, I've used uh, a couple of uh, existing uh, bicycle frames. They were brand new. I bought two brand new bicycles and chopped them up and used the tail sections for uh, this trike. And uh, as you can see, these uh, uh, OA, A-arm looking uh, uh, segments here have a couple of tubes uh, running down. And so there's, there's four prongs going to each one of these uh, hubs. And I don't think that's necessary. I think with these two uh, uh, lower ones plus one here, that would be enough. So I'm thinking of eliminating uh, this uh, tube running down here and cutting off all this uh, uh, braking mount here and this little cross member here. So visually, aesthetically, the, uh, the lines will be less busy here. Structurally, I'm really convinced it doesn't need that. You know, there's four, four uh, uh, tubes running down here. There's four over there. That's a lot of that's a lot of structure and metal uh, just to clamp onto these uh, hubs. And, uh, you know, as sturdy as I like things to be and as heavy duty as I like them to be, uh, I think that is more than is necessary, uh, a lot more. So it's kind of inelegant in that sense, in a structural design sense. And visually, without that there, there would be less busyness, and it'd be a, a little, little nicer to look at. And then, without these brakes, these uh, V brakes, as, as brilliant as they are, I would be willing to let these go and bring uh, all the uh, uh, disc braking and caliper uh, clamping uh, mechanism right down into here. I just weld on another flange and custom uh, design it so that it fit fit right in there, It'd be very clean, and it kind of hide maybe the fact that the electric hub was there, make it a little more stealthy. People would wonder, hmm, how does it go? You know, they already wonder that. They, Where's the battery, they say? Where's the motor? And all these kind of fun, fun questions that uh, are posed to me. This is the early stages of this uh, uh, e-bike stuff, and uh, you know, a lot of people are out there on the cutting edge. You've got manufacturers uh, building these things. Now, this comes out of India. BMC uh, split off with uh, uh, another uh, company that was joined to it. And I think the other company is Golden. Uh, and it uh, went to China. There's uh, 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 another almost identical hub motor that you can get a little cheaper. They're Chinese made. I think they're the Golden. Or, not gold, I think they're Mac. There's Mac and BMC. So uh, I prefer the uh, the BMC. You know, I just, uh, that's what I started with. That's what the enthusiasts seem to have uh, latched on to. They cost a little more, but, uh, you know, that's what I'm sticking with. There seems to be more parts and more controllers uh, about them. And, you know, guys like me are doing stuff with them, so... That's just what I've landed on. And so those are the three reasons uh, I'm uh, kicking this around. Now, even if it doesn't play out that, uh, you know, it's tolerable for me to uh, use this uh, BMC motor uh, clutchless, you know, I'll undoubtedly uh, 
put the uh, second hub uh, uh, driven wheel on the other side and just live with the uh, uh, V brakes up top even though the uh, wire will be coming out outboard on the other side you know that's that's not a problem not too big of a problem but you know if I can do it the other way I probably will and that'll uh, alleviate this uh, tube coming out and some of this busyness up top here bring it down here so uh, in that sense aesthetically uh, less will be more in my mind okay here we go got it lined up got my grounds got it flush got it centered got my stainless rod that uh, light flange lip uh, hanging off is uh, quite uh, thin so I've got the amp set to about 71 and uh, you know the other side is a uh, solid mass so you know I'm going to direct most of the heat there before I start to tack the other side. an interesting development. Uh, as I tacked up uh, the uh, front, uh, it actually exposed that this is just a thin veneer uh, just laid right up on there and these posts are uh, undoubtedly pressed in on top of that and then stamped on the back, that little cross part. But uh, it does uh, kind of cause me to think that uh, this is needless here, this added uh, thin uh, veneer on top. Once it goes through, you know, it sets up under there. I'm thinking about burning, burning off the whole bit and just letting these posts, you know, stay where they are. But uh, grinding it off, burning it off, making it go away. So, uh, yeah, these little unexpected developments do occur. And uh, that's just one of the things to... Uh, think about if you're going to do do this. Are you going to leave that on? You know, when you put just a little bit of heat, you know, it causes this stuff to kind of wrinkle up and uh, that's not a good thing. Here's how I got this set up uh, with the uh, stainless rod. I kind of ground it down and ovalized it uh, and shoehorned it in there and uh, I put uh, six of them. I think that'll be fine. Uh, I didn't measure them or mark them. I'm going to just uh, zip them up on this side then go deal with that other side uh, by uh, uh, grinding off uh, that uh, thin veneer plate uh, it's completely unnecessary for my purposes okay here it is on this side i've got it uh, welded up all those little cogs and it's kind of looking like a mad wheel from this side but uh, i'll grind this flush and then i'll flip it around and uh, grind off that uh, little veneer sheet uh, that's in there and uh, that will expose the uh, channel uh, on this side and then I'll weld it the same way I did uh, on the other side and it'll be uh, doubly strong that way. And as you can see with some uh, little grinding action there with a uh, cutting wheel, not the grinding wheel but one that's designed to give a more slender cut, uh, you just put a a crisscross right under a V cut and uh, you know that veneer just pops right off or will pop right off yeah and then I can get under there and weld uh, these uh, little tabs too okay there it is and uh, I'll show you the whole thing it's uh, now one solid piece because uh, behind these posts or these uh, uh, I don't know posts st studs uh, they were pressed in and uh, then they were stamped uh, across the back uh, and undoubtedly that works well enough but uh, while I was there while I was welding I just put a bead right across that baby to make it one solid piece Okay, now before I install this uh, uh, clutch mechanism that we've made clutchless by welding it, uh, 
I just want to show you visually what the freewheeling action of these uh, BMC hubs look like, you know, in, in case you haven't uh, decided, you know, whether you want to go uh, geared hub or uh, direct uh, drive uh, style. I'll show you what freewheeling looks like and, uh, you know, it's no big mystery. You can probably figure it out. But when I install this, then I'll do this again. Here we go. Lift up the tire a little bit, hit the juice. And full speed. Now I just let off the juice. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And about ten seconds. It's a heavy wheel. I've got a tire liner in it and some sealant. So, you know, it's not the most dynamic. The brakes might be hanging a little bit. But this is what freewheeling on these uh, wheels look like. Pretty much like most bikes. Some bikes are better than others. If you've got a really you know, highly tuned uh, wheel and bike, uh, they're going to spin for, you know, sometimes a minute or two. Okay, I'm going to get up on this baby, and uh, we're going to roll on out of here. And uh, after we get out the door, you'll be seeing the video coming from up top here. Oh yeah, nice day. September. Yeah, it's breezy. It's a little breezy. down the block here. I didn't give it full throttle right at the beginning. I usually kind of graduate it up. I kind of like give it all the juice and torque all at once, but this thing gets up to a steady clip real quick, okay? Now I'm uh, full speed about 23 and a half miles an hour. I'm going to let off right. Now, now we're coasting. We're not using any of the juice. This is just the coasting. As you can see, we get quite a good distance just on coasting. All right, let's test this right on this segment. I'm gonna bring it up to about 14, 12 miles an hour. There's 12. I've got it in the top gear now. I'm hand cranking. I'm at 13 miles an hour and a half. 14, 13. See, I'm going out to that boulevard out there. Usually I can make it the whole way without any uh, electric power use. You know, little pauses like this in between. Normal for even foot pedaling. All right. Okay. We're cruising. Sure. No sweat. Okay, that's our baseline. This gives me a light workout, just that little segment there. I think I'm going to go to the Sonic and have a cheeseburger and bring it home. But that gives you an idea of what it's like for me with the existing uh, clutch. You know, it's great. Works great, I dig it. But uh, it is the weak link. So, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there that use these BMC uh, hub motors that have had the clutch mechanism fail and start spinning out like I did. And so they've got a lot of those uh, 
assemblies just laying around and uh, that's something they can do with it. They can weld them up and uh, make that uh, BMC uh, hub motor a little, a little more bulletproof, so to speak, a little more reliable, fewer moving parts, fewer things to fail. It's a little busy today out on the street. Today's Sunday. Church crowd's probably letting out. Supersonic uh, cheeseburger with everything. Cook it well done, please. No, no jalapenos. Okay, I'm back from the burger shop, uh, and I had lunch, uh, and I just decided to get on a roll and go ahead and uh, take the uh, rear uh, wheel off and uh, take the uh, hub motor out, and uh, now I have exposed the existing. Uh, clutch mechanism. As you can see, that's freewheeling, doesn't go back the other way, but uh, when it's, you don't have to worry, it, it doesn't prevent the wheel from going in both directions because uh, these uh, allow the uh, uh, wheel itself to move, but once the uh, thing is energized, it locks and uh, uh, drives the wheel. But this is what that clutch mechanism uh, looks like. It's a uh, an insert, it's like a cage bearing, but uh, not only are there ball bearings down there, there's little cogs that uh, cause it to only go in one direction once it's energized. And it's a, a clever design, but uh, uh, the caging material is plastic. And when these start getting brittle and have breaks in them, that's what I found. It was just some, some breaks in this uh, little top uh, seal on top here. Uh, it causes those little cogs to uh, uh, not give the gripping action, the cogging action that they once did. So uh, I just uh, ripped, uh, ripped it out, dug it out, and you know discovered that you know that this is the weak link. It's not these composite uh, uh, planetary gears at all. It's this clutching mechanism. So you know. This is what we've replaced it with. This is the old clutch mechanism. We've made it clutch less, and uh, it's one solid piece. And we even, uh, or I even uh, welded the back uh, where those uh, studs were, uh, you know, pressed in and stamped on the back. So now, besides the uh, gears themselves, this is one solid piece, and uh, we're going to put it back in the hub motor on the wheel on the trike and uh, give it a test and uh, I'm putting it uh, on my existing wheel on the left uh, side rear and uh, you know somebody might say well why are you putting this you know on that side didn't you want to you know uh, reverse the direction of the out uh, the other side uh, and, and yes that's that's what I ultimately uh, uh, want to do but still I want to try it uh, on my existing uh, hub on the same side as I'm uh, used to uh, using it on and see what the resistance is and uh, I've got some more tires coming too and uh, you know I'm going to change those out when they arrive so all this is coming off again so you know I'm going to test it with with uh, the left side wheel and uh, oh I suppose also uh, uh, because uh, I also want to test and see if it actually does reverse the direction. Now here's the other uh, uh, controller I'm going to use and on this particular controller it is this green jumper here. Now uh, leaving it open like this is forward, considered forward I guess on the left side with on a front motor the uh, uh, wire going out to the uh, right side. but. 
when I connect these, same, same controller on the other, uh, on the unit, when I connect them, that will reverse the uh, direction. So we'll do that. We'll uh, put the uh, hub motor back on, we'll uh, go in the uh, right direction, and then I'll connect the green jumpers on that uh, controller. And, and we'll just, you know, demonstrate that yes, once you remove that uh, clutch mechanism, then you can reverse the direction on these uh, BMC motors that uh, previously you couldn't do that. Okay, and here it is uh, on the hub, and already I'm sensing that the resistance isn't going to be that great. See, that's without the uh, bearings in there, and uh, this is the motor, and that's how much resistance I'm going to get. We'll see how that transmits uh, out into the uh, outer periphery of the wheel itself. Okay, we've arrived at the moment. The uh, new assembly is uh, installed in the hub, and that means it doesn't have the uh, clutching mechanism. It uh, will be a direct drive system now, except that, uh, uh, you know, the one big uh, feature of the BMC motors is they got that reduction gear ratio, so you get higher torque, quicker takeoffs, and that's very important to me, maybe even more important than the free wheeling. We'll see. To me, that is. And uh, like we did before, we uh, spun the wheel. Whoops, that's not the way the wheel will turn, but it's the same either way. You can see there is resistance. It doesn't spin for 10 seconds uh, like before. One, two, three, about three seconds. So there's definitely more resistance, but uh, you know, I haven't ridden it yet, so I don't really know what it'll transmit into uh, you know the feeling aspect. But uh, visually, uh, it's got about uh, two-thirds more drag, maybe more. We'll see. All right, let's give it a spin. Top speed, letting off. So you get a little coasting, not much. Let's do that again. just made uh, e-bike history. Now the one other thing I want to check while I'm here is that uh, reverse direction now because that you know is part of the point of this if you've got a trike and you don't want the wire hanging off the other side uh, you know you'll want to reverse it if you do that or if you move it over there and uh, like I said I'm not going to put this over there yet because uh, I've still got tires coming and uh, I want to decide if if that's what I want anyway. So we'll see. Got that little jumper uh, connected and uh, I hit the throttle and the wheel kept going in the same direction. And I, you know, got a mild moment of panic and I thought, oh, what? Well, why didn't it go? And uh, so, uh, you know, it took me a second or two and I thought, okay, I shut it down. There's a, a power switch that I got wired into it. I, I turned it off and turned it on again. Actually, first I looked at the uh, cycle analyst to, to see if it overrode the controller's jumpers, if it had a, uh, a selection for forward and reverse on the motor, if it took over that function. But no, it didn't. It doesn't uh, control that. The controller still controls that. And uh, so I just uh, flip the uh, shut off, turn it back on, and sure enough, it goes uh, in the opposite direction, as you'll see right here. That is the opposite, right? Yeah. That would be reverse. Which is what I will want if I'm going to uh, take a wheel like this, flip it on the other side, and keep uh, it so that there's no wire hanging off the side of the frame to catch on stuff. But anyway, that's another first. Uh, the uh, direction uh, of these uh, hub motors, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's done it. But here it is. Uh, you know, these are, you know, it's a capability with a little modification. That you can change them, change the direction. And uh, I suppose the BMC company could. Uh, 
you know, offer those little uh, clutch inserts with the cogs going in the opposite direction. So, you know, their marketing doesn't seem to be the best. They're way over in India, and uh, I believe their uh, headquarters in uh, North America is uh, right in a place uh, called Chatsworth, uh, California, where I used to grow up and run around as a kid on mini bikes and stuff. So I know really where their headquarters are. I used to climb around those areas. It's right over, uh, I believe, uh, by Nordoff. Nordoff and, I don't know, Winneka, further down, I don't know. But it's uh, right there uh, in uh, the San Fernando Valley. And uh, the, the only dealers of these hubs, uh, you know, seem to be the mom and pop shops. These uh, new entrepreneurs and, and bike shops that are uh, getting into these. and. You know, I'll just take a little moment here and, and suggest that uh, that's the way you do these uh, e-bikes is uh, you do it yourself. You know, they, they do have off the rack, off the shelf uh, bikes that you can buy. They're pretty pricey, uh, but you know, they still represent a good value, I believe. But uh, I recommend you don't, you don't buy those because uh, I think it's really better you put the, the few components that there are together and that way you develop uh, you know the supply chain and you uh, source the uh, uh, stuff yourself so you'll always be able to source other parts and uh, you know you don't get this big expensive bike that you know arrives and you know lo and behold it's great for about 30 days 60 days and then something goes wrong something small something that you know, you haven't developed the skills to figure out. And, you know, here you're left with this, you know, $3,000, $4,000 bike, and you say, oh, it doesn't work. And you call the place, take it back, fix it, make it work, you know. And, you know, you're left uh, maybe out of commission. So I suggest you don't go that route. You know, through those same outlets and mom-and-pop shops and bike shops that uh, are... Uh, outlets for e-bike uh, parts and, and the bikes themselves, uh, they'll have the parts and uh, I suggest you buy the kit and uh, that way you will be wise when it comes to e-bikes. You won't be just you know an off-the-shelf kind of consumer. <coughs> but uh, who knows, maybe as time goes on you get a lo local bike shop that has their own line of uh, e-bikes and so right down the street is uh, you know, an ace guru for all that stuff. So that might be uh, better still for some people. But for me, you know, wherever I go, I know uh, where I can find some uh, BMC uh, parts. Now, there, I don't know many places. Uh, San Francisco e-bikes is uh, the place right now. Uh, High-powered cycles used to be, but I think they're kind of getting away from the BMC geared uh, hub motors. Now they uh, come out, and San Francisco e-bikes too has come out with a, uh, a mid-drive, and that takes away the uh, hub motor concept, and that has some pluses uh, with just what we're talking about here with the uh, the clutch mechanism with a mid-drive hub. That is the motor, you know, that connects to a chain and a sprocket somewhere. The sprocket can have the freewheeling action itself, so you don't have uh, a weak link inside the motor hub because the uh, freewheeling action can be done uh, very simply by, uh, uh, you know, a one-way or a freewheeling uh, sprocket. Very simple, cheap mechanism uh, that can be installed on any axle. So, you know, I've got a, another trike, uh, off-the-shelf trike, uh, adult trike, and, you know, I'm kind of thinking about maybe experimenting in that uh, direction with the uh, just a, a chain driven motor. But otherwise, let's get on this baby and let's reproduce that same uh, 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 track or trail I took and uh, uh, see how this baby does.
What you doing, boy? Good boy. Okay, let's head down this uh, same road, get up to a full clip here, and I'm going to let off the juice uh, about where I did before and see what kind of a uh, coasting distance I get by comparison. Now, you know, regenerative braking is, you know, not so much when you're actually applying the brakes, but when you're letting off the juice. That, uh, Drag. This is about where I let off. So there I go. I'm letting off, and uh, that's what the regenerative braking does. It's this uh, added drag that trickles a little charge back to the batteries. And uh, you know, I'm not getting quite as far as I did before, but pretty close. Uh, you know, about two thirds the way. So that's what I'm thinking. About one third is what. Uh, it adds and drag. So anyway, let me get up uh, on here and I'll get uh, rolling about 10, 11, 12 miles an hour. I'm in top gear. That's uh, eight, the eight speed on my internal hub. Now that camera is right in the uh, crank uh, bracket. So, you know, you're hearing a lot of noise that it's not really, uh, uh, you know, causing me to hear, and uh, so that's all. You might hear some wind too. The mic picks up the, the little extra wind noise as well. I'm going about 11 miles an hour, and about halfway there, and already uh, it's uh, a little more uh, laborsome. And you can hear the uh, that new uh, hub mechanism kind of making a little noise. I might have welded that up uh, a little off center. So, you know, one of those planetary gears may be a, a kind of a high point as it rotates around in those teeth. But uh, I didn't uh, lubricate that uh, hub and, you know, undoubtedly it'll quiet down on its own. A slight bit of uh, off center won't be a big deal because it's not a real close tolerance, uh, but uh, yeah. So it took uh, more energy. I couldn't keep the same speed up. I'm not gonna do any more in this direction because there's more wind going this way and that's just more stuff to fight. So yeah, it's about a third more resistance or a third more energy or about a third loss in distance covered with the uh, loss of that uh, clutching mechanism, that freewheeling clutch. It, uh, it is uh, a help, you know. Uh, but uh, again, it is the weak link in these uh, BMC uh, hub motors, so you can take that uh, weak link away, and if you rely on the electrics, uh, or always have uh, the ability to energize it, uh, you know, I, I think it's a, a viable option. I'm going to do it. I'm going to roll around on it like this for a week or so and see how I like it. I might even uh, put on that uh, that uh, cruise control device. And in that way, you know, I can kind of offset that uh, drag by putting a, a light cruise control on when I am doing the hand cranking up top. And uh, that way I'll get to uh, compensate a little bit for that. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, I'm going to declare a, a little victory for me and maybe overall kind of a breakthrough in, uh, you know, the e-bike uh, industry for those of us who, you know, prefer the uh, BMC uh, products and, and hub motors, and, and I do. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a crossover uh, for me because I'm losing that uh, freewheeling but maintaining the high torque with those uh, reduction gears. So, you know, it's a, it's a new possibility for, for people, uh, you know, even besides me and the, the whole trike concept. 
I suppose uh, for the uh, you know motocross biking uh, enthusiast uh, who maybe want to put uh, a couple of hubs front and back and want that low end torque, and who would even uh, just uh, forego any uh, you know uh, foot pedals and uh, a bottom bracket crank uh, sets. You know they could have uh, a front and back motor, good uh, low end torque, and uh, you know none of the chain stuff. Just a you know a wild uh, uh, you know climbing machine, gunning it machine, and uh, forget about the pedals. Just just go with the front and back motor. And uh, I don't think the uh, crystallites will uh, give you the torque that the BMC uh, will give you, but. Uh, you know, that's the weak link in the BMC is that clutch. And the clutch is great when it works, but uh, when it doesn't, it spins out. And, you know, theoretically, you could, you know, end up going nowhere. So, uh, for the people who are kind of on the fence, I would think that's nice to know that uh, even if this does give out, you know, if you've got a little welding skill or, you know, got a cousin who's got a welder and will zip it up for you, you know, I think what I've presented here is easy to follow. Anybody can do it. I might have even got mine a little uh, off-center. That, you know, rotation. Uh, woo -woo. It could be there's a, a high spot in my uh, rotation, but uh, I'm guessing that will quiet down pretty quickly. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's a solution uh, that you don't even have to replace the hub mechanism right now. The only uh, way to fix a uh, uh, clutch uh, is to replace it. And that's because I, I don't know if you can get that, that uh, insert there with the bearings and the, those clutching cogs. So you know, it's probably pretty tricky to uh, get it in and out of there, but uh, I'm sure it can be done. I'm sure it didn't happen at the manufacturing point where that uh, thin plate uh, that holds those bearings down, I'm sure, you know, you could dig it out and, uh, you know, just put the insert down in there and, I don't know, hold those little cogs in with a little, little bearing grease or something if that doesn't uh, interfere with it and just slide this back in. But I don't know. I, I bet it, uh, I bet there is a way and so uh, it'd be nice if one of the dealers would come up with uh, that as a package, just the insert, not this whole assembly, because uh, that's what they cost. They cost uh, a little over 200 bucks for what you see here. And that's not cheap. You know, if they, they give out, uh, mine lasted me uh, two years before it gave out, you know, which wasn't bad, I suppose, but uh, that's $100 a year just for the, the clutch mechanism, you know, average. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a little spending. But that gives another option to people out there who do have these who don't want to spend the 200 bucks and are wondering, uh, gee, it's broke. How do I fix it? Do I want to get in there? Well, you know, get in there. It's not hard. And, uh, you know, if you really are uh, a type for money, you know, you can weld it up. It didn't cost me uh, anything to speak of. I used existing materials, a little argon gas on the welder, and... Uh, Boom, it was done. It took me about three hours yesterday to actually do the uh, uh, work on it. But I was going at a leisurely pace, taking breaks and sipping coffee or home-brewed beer. I don't know what I was doing, but it didn't take long. And so, uh, you know, it was going so well that I decided to get back on it today. And as you can see, we're done. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, use this for a week or so and uh, you know I'll have the new tires arriving I have the other uh, uh, laced uh, wheel with the hub motor on it so you know it could be in a week or so that uh, I start uh, putting this uh, together at least for a trial basis with the uh, second uh, energized uh, hub but uh, you know Underneath that seat there, there's not a lot of room to mount another uh, uh, controller. And uh, so I'll probably refabricate that whole section under the seat to accept those two uh, controllers. And undoubtedly, I'll uh, refabricate uh, the uh, battery box underneath the uh, lower section there. 
it acts as kind of a balance with the battery down low with just one battery, but both of them down below will be uh, great too. And they'll fit down there with the new battery box without too much problem, but it's more work. It's more uh, trouble. Uh, so what I'll probably do is just uh, take uh, the second controller, the second battery, and uh, after I mount the, the wheel on there, I'll just connect it up loosely. I'll just uh, lash them together with some duct tape, set them in the uh, basket bin in the back, uh, hooked up, and give it a test, give it a trial, and you know, make some more e-bike history. So this opens up new possibilities uh, for not just me, but hopefully for other people out there who've been kind of uh, wondering about this stuff because it is it's a uh, it's a new kind of a field this e-bike and there's uh, products are changing all the time and you know the styles of the implementation you know uh, mid drive you know hub motors direct drive geared motors freewheeling you know versus cogging drag you know it's all kind of ooh wow i don't know if i want to get into that but uh I suppose the low-cost solution is just to go on Amazon or eBay, and uh, I hear those uh, Continental 9 motors are much like Crystalites, only a, a, a lot cheaper, but they're still real uh, sturdy, and uh, I don't know, for about 300 bucks, you can get one laced into a wheel of virtually any size you want, and it may even come with a controller, maybe no battery, so, you know, you're up and running uh, with that, uh, you know, the most part of the system for 300 or more bucks plus you throw in a five six hundred dollar uh, lithium battery and boom for a thousand bucks uh, you've taken an existing bike and really put a, a potent system onto it so uh, that's one way to get started cheap and uh, you know low maintenance the uh, direct drives are low maintenance so if you know this kind of is spooky to you about opening up motors and changing things out, and, you know, cutting wires, ooh, you know, go the other way, go, try the cheap, safe way, you know, I didn't do that, you know, I pretty much knew I was going to go all in, so that's what I've done, okay, so peace be with you all, and uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully it'll be on the uh, uh, dual rear drive on a Delta trike, and uh, I believe that'll be a first, okay, bye-bye.